Okay, thank you very much once again for coming on the uh, West Yorkshire Football Show. Um, brilliant to have you back. Um, Glad to be here. And uh, obviously, we've you've got a lovely cup of tea there. You've, you've apparently you're an iced tea m- more sort of a man. You know, I am an iced tea guy. I, at one time, I really thought iced tea was born and bred in the UK, and then when I got here, uh, they didn't really spell it. You know, much less drink it. Yeah. Um, so I've been having to make do, but now I'm coming up to a you know, a hot tea man. That's good, that's great. Um, I asked you last time, you, well, I think we'd, we, you'd only been uh, sort of owner for around about four months. You've had another couple of months now on top of that. Um, what more have you learnt um, since the last time we spoke? How much have you taken in just generally about maybe the area or the, the club itself? How much have you personally learnt? Well, I'd say, I tell you, humility is one thing. I've learned to be a lot more, you know, humble, I would say. Part of it is because of the fact that, you know, you've, look, you've got, you know, a supporter group that is fiercely loyal. They really are dedicated and love the club. And if we're not winning, you know, they're very upset. And so until I think we really get our arms around and really, and really are able to streamline things and start winning on a consistent basis, which we plan to and we're, we're, we're preparing for, um, I think the, the supporters are going to be very demanding. And so we've learned that, you know, um, on one hand, I, well, I pre, uh, plead uh, patience. Um, sometimes they're a little bit impatient, but I will, uh, I'll, we'll endeavor to continue to do what we think is really the right thing, but we'll always be listening to the fans as well. Mm. You've taken some big decisions already regarding things around the stadium, um, obviously in terms of uh, it, it, within the club. What's been the biggest decision you think you've made or maybe the most successful one so far? Well, I think there's uh, what, what, what hasn't been seen is that you know, we, we've, we've, um, we've put a lot of infrastructure into the organization, really not necessarily on the pitch. I mean, it's there. We're, we're constantly changing really the team side of things, but really it's preparing for really what I would say is our future. You know, and that is, as, I, as, you, as you know, uh, what I've said is that, you know, um, in that time when we get to the Premier League, and we will, um, we need to be ready so that we can stay there. That requires an infrastructure. So an example would be, you know, as, as you know, we, you know, really expanded the you know, academy. But what we also had to do along with that is we had to build some infrastructure along with it as well. Mm-hmm. You know, we had to add space and location for people to be. And at the same time, that means more, more employees, that type of thing. All that, is, all that is moving along in the process. But right now, really, people in, you know, our supporters can't really see it. But I'm really, I'm really happy with that. Uh, I'm really happy also with, I think, um, and, and this again is one of those things where I think people can't see how we really responded to all of our injuries. You know, we didn't anticipate we were going to have, you know, as many injuries. And especially, I think, just as we started to get better, you know, we, had, we, we got hit with again. So, you know, I'd say about a third of the season, you know, we had injuries up to five, sometimes even 10 or 11. Mm. Now we're kind of coming back down to that five area. And I think the question is, how do you respond? And, um, and, I, and I think on one hand, there's a criticism. Um, why are you playing these players, you know, when they might be a defender position, we're behind by a, by a, by a goal, and we, we put in another defender. And it part is because, you know, we're really tapped out. We just don't, you know, we don't have the bench strength to be able to bring in you know, an offensive minded player for another offensive minded player because we were looking for, you know, how do you, how do you keep it close and at the same time look for a win. But I, but I do, I will say this much, that is something that really we haven't talked about a lot, but I really think that, you know, keeping, you know, matches close, keeping matches close and then hoping that you can, you know, for a, you know, an equalizer or a win, which, you know, in some cases we did and in many cases we did not. Obviously, the form before Christmas wasn't the best, um, but we have picked up, like you say, in recent weeks, especially a great win against Blackburn here um, in the 3 0 victory. What, what went through your mindset in that sort of little period before Christmas when we had a number of, of bad results? How did you personally feel, um, obviously, not being able to change on the pitch what, what you'd like to? Right, uh, good questions. Um, one, I would say this much. Um, we had to look to see who we were playing, you know, who we were playing, what our injury level was. And again, I'd always say this, but you can't always hide behind injuries, but we had, we, we were so depleted, you know, from a club standpoint that you had to take that into consideration. And I also knew that um, there was going to be some light at the end of the tunnel because in some cases, you may know right before that, you know, we had a really, we had a pretty good run 
you know, we hadn't we didn't lose in you know five out of six matches. We tied and we we, we won one. So the feeling was is you know we really the momentum was that we were going to be building up. We knew that also we had some tough matches against some playoff minded you know uh, teams that had been in the Premier League last year. Um, it had been you know they'd been relegated. We were going to be playing them yeah. some cases on the road. We knew those those matches were going to be tough, and if we got through those on the other side. You know, I think that we'd, we'd get ourselves to the halfway point of the season and then retool, which is what we're doing right now, as you, as you can see, you know, with the, with the window being open and then really take it down mm -hmm. the home stretch, mm -hmm. which will be really interesting because we have four matches coming up that I believe for all intents and purposes, they're winnable. Supporters look at segments in seasons and think you can get so many points here, so many points there. Obviously, that's not really what managers do or they don't say that they do but obviously you are a fresh pair of eyes on the EFL and the season that we've got so you know you maybe not know the whole history of clubs and, and how they're doing but do you do that as well is that something that you're enjoying doing looking at certain games and thinking you know we can beat this club we can beat that club or that will be a tough game Stephen we do um, but I but what I'm doing unfortunately right now which I think is what you know a lot of our supporters are doing that is looking to see what are how how are we separating ourselves on the relegation side of those clubs and what we really should be doing um, is really looking ahead to see what teams can we leapfrog and the interesting thing about it is yes we're not that far away from a relegation zone at the same time we're not very far away from you know a, 50, a 16th place you know something that really is quite achievable if you have a run you know of two or three games and somebody has maybe a slightly, you know, one or two losses, mm. we can leapfrog those, the, the, those clubs. That's entirely possible this year. And I'm, I'm going to be optimistic that, you know, come Saturday, you know, against Plymouth, that we're going to have the first of uh, a good number of matches. Do, you've mentioned 16th. I find that interesting that, we, you know, people at the top of clubs don't tend to publicly say whether, where they'd like a team to finish. Is that is that a goal for you? Is it an ambitious goal? Is it more a realistic goal, or is it just something that you you want to say? No, I would say this is. I wish we were in sixteenth place today, looking ahead to see where would be the next spot. I really look at it in terms of what kind of stability. You know, is is the club stable from a performance standpoint, and are we moving in the right direction? I just don't think we can really truly say that yet. Yeah. Do I think we're moving in the right direction? I do, but I I can't put numbers to it to prove that we can. Mm. I'm not going to ask you whether you, 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 you're, you're happy with Darren Moore because you've emphatically said that last night on the BBC. Um, what, what question I'd like to ask is, we've seen two transfers come in so far. Brody Spencer come back from uh, Motherwell, who's had an excellent loan. What other tools, apart from on the pitch, are you looking to give da Darren to help him improve the club and the team overall? Well, obviously we need strikers. You know, you saw we, you know, we signed one. I'm hoping that we can get another one, maybe even another one after that. I think there's my, my feeling is you can never have too many strikers. I think we need to make sure that the middle is shored up pretty well. I think we demonstrated that by the the, the loan that we, you know, picked up uh, from Chelsea, and we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna see some others as well. I think I think we've got to look at a defender. But you know, our goal is to is is to get a few more you know players in, and really make them count in those significant players players that we knew that we needed help. Mm -hmm. In some cases, we had you know decent players at that position, but we didn't have any we didn't have any depth. And so when those players went down, you know sometimes we're moving players out of position, in into you know coverage in areas really that they probably that's not their normal position that they would play. And. In terms of the, the transfer window, I, I very interestingly heard that you say about six more signings. Does that, does that include the, the two that's already come in and, and Brody coming back, or did you mean after the, the No, that's a, good, that's a good question, because I know there's a lot of clarity. We saw on social media that there yeah. were questions on that. Really, the total would be total of six okay. in, in the entire window. And what I really meant, I think, which was probably misunderstood, is we'd already we'd already had three in between Brody and then the two signings. So that was already three. Yeah. I told you know Mark and his team, you know, um, look for another three. He got a little scared because he didn't understand it as well, and he, and he went, just oh wanted to confirm that. Um, yeah, no, obviously. that's that's a good question because I mean, it, uh, the goal is six. 
Look, that's that's you know really almost half your starting squad. I mean, it is uh, over half your starting squad. That's a tall order, and I mean, you know, this is a little bit tougher window than when you when you come into July as well. So, um, I've asked a lot of them, and a lot of it is because, as you heard me say earlier, I don't want to keep looking back. I want to look forward, and this is that first step for us to do that. Do you feel like this is the first big step as you've been? Or obviously taking over the club is the first big step, but do you feel like this is the first chance that you are able to, on on and off the pitch, have a, a, a huge beneficial say for how the club operates going forward? Yes, it was a bigger one because really when you look at July last year, we had really very little time. Uh, we'd only taken control of the club in you know late June. And the other part, we had to be very mindful of what the EFL told us about not meddling. I mean, they were very certain. Those are, you know, and you you want to make sure that you get, you you get approval. And so, we really had an arm's distance in most all things that we did, and that was one of them. And I mean, people didn't really understand that. I'm not hiding behind that, but the reality, we just didn't have as much time to be able to really make some strategic moves. And I think that, you know, um, I think the feeling was also on that is that, you know, Neil did a great job of, you know, really shoring up um, what player personnel we had, uh, so we believed that we had a lot of those players that were going to play to the level that they did, you know, once the season started. And they did early on. I mean, fr- frankly, they did very early on. But we got the injury bug, and we had some other things that happened that made it very difficult. So here we are. You've seen within your first six months the positivity, the negativity, the everything in between. How have you personally ha- sort of thought about that I know that you're very from what it seems self-conscious about how um, you, you speak and how you want to to come across which is brilliant do you have you did you find it hard some of in in the early months about maybe some things that were said uh, personally yeah I think that the, the, I, I've said this you know repeatedly um, I, I would say this much the, really, all for all intents and purposes, our, our supporter base is really fantastic. You couldn't ask for a better group. Do you have a few people in there that sometimes they get a little bit upset and they, they get a little bit personal? They do. Those are the ones that really hurt. You know, if you see something about you or something about your family or your heritage, where you came from, those are bothersome. Those are rare. Those really are. And the interesting about it is, is that we even have people that have come back and apologized. You know, and I, I really take the, that to heart. So mm-hmm. I know how passionate our fan base is. I have to really respect that. And the other part is I haven't really earned their, their, their respect yet. And I, and, I, and I accept that. I think once we start to make some moves that, that, you know, on the pitch and we talk more about off the pitch, we'll see that that will come in time. And I fully will accept that. Do you, do you, um, you, you talk about not earning... Uh, supports respect though do you think that goes two ways do you think there has to be a little bit more leeway from from fans to, to think well hang on he only came in in July he's got to get his you know feet under the table it's a new country it's it, it, everything's sort of brand new for you and it's it's different no it, you're right uh, Stephen I would say this much I mean uh, I've talked about patience I, I, uh, I'm impatient with some things patient with other I've been patient pretty much with my businesses my whole life uh, patient also on the sports side of uh, my businesses as well, I found that that tends to be, you know, your uh, uh, something that can be a strength mm-hmm. as opposed to re- overreact or you know react too quickly. You know, that's part of the reason why I know there's a lot of frustration because, you know, uh, people it's it's easy in the in the in the football world in the in the in the UK to sack you know managers if they don't perform. You know, culturally we just don't do that in the states. You know, but and part of it is because there's a lot of preparation when you when you hire one. You know, you do you do a lot of uh, you know mm-hmm. analysis to determine are they qualified, are they right per, the right person for what we want them to do. Mm-hmm. And so it'd be in my mind hardly be hardly unfair after 12 matches. You know, when you already know what somebody's capable of from a performance standpoint. This is not somebody who you know left left the sport you know as a player and then all of a sudden they became a manager and it just didn't work out. There's a preparation time. In the case of Darren, I don't want to really necessarily talk about him a lot as it relates to this. He got a great track record. You know, he's been he's he's had a couple stop offs, you know, after you know, really retiring and then you know getting into, you know, preparing himself to be a, a manager. He's got credentials and a record, and we looked at that. So I feel really very good about 
you know, who we hired, and it's way too premature uh, because I know, I know, I know, um, you know, our fan base, they're impatient, and that's okay. And, we, and, and our patience, I think we can equalize, we can help one another, and we'll see in the end who's right. Um, I want to talk about the, the, the academy and also the stadium, but just a question before that. Have you been surprised at the knowledge of English football fans and how deep they go into every facet of a football club and you know what they what they look at, what they think about it, what they how they feel about it? Is that something that's surprised you or, or you've It's learnt? impressive. No, it is really impressive. I mean, I, I would say for all intents and purposes, our supporter, our fan base, they are very knowledgeable. I think most all of them had to have played this sport. And, I'll, and also, most of the time, what they say is generally true. Now, on the part about, you know, sack the manager, that's, you know, sometimes more, you know, opinion than fact. But the reality of it in, term of, in terms of, you know, if they see deficiencies, what we have on the pitch, they're, 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 they're in line with what most of our experts you know, that we have as, you know, people that work for us would agree with them. Mm. So you are right. And that is true not only just for our, our, our supporter base, but I find generally, you know, British, you know, uh, footballers are, you know, who are, who are fans are very knowledgeable in the sport. Mm. Um, the academy you talked about last night on the, on the BBC, um, you said that um, obviously uh, the, the club still rents um, the, the tra training ground. Um, when, whenever that deal happens with, with regards to you, you purchasing the training ground, have you got something in mind that you'd love to do there that's not already there? And how, how would you like to upgrade the facilities? Because there have been plans in the past to upgrade certain bits and do certain things to, to, to level up the training ground. I suppose you'll have your own ideas and thoughts about where you, you might want to do First it. of all, it's a great facility. I mean, it really is. I mean, the, 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 <coughs> the only challenge, it needs to be updated. I mean, it's it's uh, it needs uh, probably some new buildings that need to be, and, and we're doing some of that even right now. Um, but I would say this much, we, we, need, we need to build some of the infrastructure. It needs some some uh, tender loving care but it's not that far away I, I would tell you this I, I would think if you look at some of the other facilities and really first class operations um, we've got the physical structure I mean we've got the physical size that part is in place number of fields um, you know how it how it sort of you know lays itself out from an external standpoint um, on the internal side buildings probably technology on the inside you know um, you know fitness you know uh, programs and and the equipment, we need that, and, and we will invest in that. So that those, those would be probably the first things we do after we take control. And it was fantastic news to hear last night that you want to have the academy at the highest level um, for, for all teams. I mean, that's something that the club did, you know, a number of years ago, and, and you're wanting to get back to that. We did. We would take it one step at a time. You know, as you know, we increased, you know, we, 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 uh, we have much broader, you know, competition opportunities right now. It'll take time to backfill that, but we will continue to monitor it. And we have to file that, you know, with the appropriate authorities. But we will do that in time, whether that's this next year, or the year after, we'll, we'll prepare. But it, my my guess is, you know, we've got to we, we've got to put a little bit more production in place before we do that. I suppose you enjoy the longer term projects as well as the short term. But you are, I imagine that you can sort of build it in your mind how you want that longer term project to go. Well, I think part of Stephen, I think part of it is, as you've heard me talk about before. You know, it's really a long-term play that we have here. It's not. It's not. Even even though I know there, we've got some aggressive, you know, goals that we want to hit. The reality of it is, we have to play the long game. Mm -hmm. You know, my goal is like to get into the Premier League. You know that we've we've talked about that. And as I've also said, the second part of that equation really is, once we get there, we want to make sure that we stay there. Mm -hmm. We don't want to be that person in the bottom of the of the league, you know, fighting for survival or trying to figure out how we push our way up. We need to plan for that. And that's really what we're doing right now in the first five, six months of, of ownership here. One of the big things that surrounds everybody's ownership at Huddersfield Town is obviously the stadium. Um, I know last night you said that you were going to have talks um, with the council. I don't know if that those have happened or whether you're still happening after this. Um, what We know the end game for you is wanting to own the stadium, but have you found it difficult in terms of dealing with accounts? I don't know how it works in America compared no, to we here. Had, we had no, we had a meeting. We had a meeting today. It was actually a great meeting. Um, really liked the everyone there. 
they want they want a positive outcome as well. I feel we're going to get to a positive outcome sooner than later, um, and I think they they recognize um, what we want and they want us you know to achieve that goal. And I think that we have to be a little bit methodical. Can't talk about the specifics. You no. can probably appreciate that. Yeah. But at the same time, I'm really impressed. I think they have a vision of where they want to go with really, you know, economically, and then how we fit in to the, you know, Huddersfield community economically. They, they, they can clearly see that we are one of the major forces there, mm -hmm. and they need us as a partner, and we need them as a partner candidly. So I'm, I, I feel really, um, I feel really great coming out of the meeting today, but. Um, I, I would look for, let me say this, I would look for big things to come in the future. I keep saying that, but I, I believe it's going to happen. Well, ha, uh, obviously not to put a timeline on things, but th is, that, is that one of the major things you're looking at at this month to progress that a long way down the line? I, I would say it's a short term, you know, there are things that you have short term and longer term. This okay. is short term. We want to get this sooner than later. Yeah. Part of it is because, as I've, as I've said before, we need, to, we, need, we need some infrastructure changes here, you know, at the facility uh, just alone. We need some cosmetic, you know, improvements. We know, we know things like, you know, toilets for men and women. They're just desperately dated. Uh, we've got to make sure we update that, and we've got to look for ways that we can be more efficient. You know, with whether whether it's you know whether it's um, um, you know uh, waste management or whether it's something like water management. Mm -hmm. You know, though solar, those types of things. We want to put those out there because in the long term, those will save money, um, so that we can benefit. Our players on the pitch. You talked about revenues and, and 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 sort of being able to once you've got control of a stadium, having that ability to heighten revenues, which is obviously what you would end up um, using those revenues to improve a team necessarily. <clears throat> but have you also got to be mindful of the fact that Huddersfield? You've got to know the area a little bit now. You you know the sort of people that live here and come from here. Do you also have to be wary of not overpricing things such as, you know, drinks, food, season tickets, things like that? Is that something also in the back of your mind? You always have to be mindful of that. Um, yeah. What also we're, we're mindful of is that we're really among the lowest in the league by mm -hmm. far, by far. And as, as I've always talked about, the way we drive, I would say, the quality on the pitch, aside from me always just writing, you know, out of our checks is to increase the revenue side. Yeah. And there's a lot of opportunity there. And I just don't mean raising prices for the reasons of raising prices, mm -hmm. but we know we're, after, we're gonna have to offer some, some other products and services as well. Mm -hmm. You know, we wanna, what we all wanna do is, I wanna put some concerts out here in time. That's one of the things I think it's, I think, I feel like, you know, in the, the Huddersfield community, that's desperately needed. And there's not many, you know, locations where I can see where you can have, you know, really, you know, some concerts of magnitude you know, where you can bring a community uh, together and they can watch somebody really famous. The one thing that I love about the UK is there's so many great entertainers here that, um, and it's just not that far from, you know, where I'm from to bring them in. And I would love to, you know, my, like I, I love groups like, you know, the, all the, you know, the Paul McCartney's of the world and, you know, um, like Mick Jagger, I could go on and on with every group, you know, in the seventies <laughs> and eighties that were, you know, and beyond that were really great. Um, but my, there are just so many of them here. My sort of era as well, Kevin, by the way. I'm, even I was though, say, even I'm, though I'm 27, I'm I, uh, I like older music. I was going to say, I'm, I did, <laughs> but the, well, it's timeless. We like to say that music is timeless. But in ter and, and in terms of like the, the gym that's closed down and the swimming pool, you've said about reopening them. I mean, that is a, that is a source of income and, and also um, a community uh, asset because of the way the stadiums run. When you, when you get hold of the stadium, how can it be protected so it's still a community asset? Is that something that's in your plan? Or? No, that is part of the plan. And I mean, I think the answer is that one, one of the first things that I mentioned to the council today um, was exactly that, uh, which you referenced earlier. And that is, you know, really the gymnasium, you know, what I would say that closed down, the pool that closed down. I said, let's, let's see what we can do to open that book back up sooner than possible. There's something like the area of... 3,200 to 3,500, you know, people who are members who are displaced mm -hmm. and they have to go to now another part of maybe Huddersfield or elsewhere, you know, to get the you know, get that same service. I know we can do that here. We don't need to really even make money on that. It's really it's it's part of the part that we just alluded to just a moment ago about it's a community asset and we need we we want to make sure that they come to our community asset and they can be a reflection, you know, of what the people of Huddersfield 
can go to. The, the reason I ask that question is because we've seen in British football over many years actually uh, in the past and, and current situations that are going on that um, owners have come in, bought the stadiums and then just used it for their own private assets. You clearly are a person that is very community focused anyway so you, that's to me that's part of your thinking naturally. At this point you know in my life I mean it's really it's really your legacy is what do you do for your community? Yeah. You know, I, I'm proud of what we've done in Sacramento, where I'm from. I feel like I have an, an obligation to do that same here. I want a great football club. I know everybody here does, yeah. and I mean, so we're we're gonna we're gonna drive toward that. But at the same time, we want to we want to be a community asset. We want to be a benefit to those people because, again, I think that we can provide one of the major sources of where activities can be around the community. You know much of much of the week and month regardless of the day regardless of the time of year um it, you, well, the last time we spoke um i asked you about the documentary um obviously you said that there might be thoughts around doing things with netflix stuff like that two episodes came out very good i might say i've enjoyed every episode of the series what's happening with that well i think we have one or two more and then i think the question is where we go from there Okay. And that, that is kind of uh, yet to be decided. Uh, there, is, there has been a lot of interest in, on a follow-up um, series, maybe not necessarily a dovetail off of um, Up the Town, but maybe something very similar to that, which involves Huddersfield. And so we're waiting to kind of hear a little bit more about that. I think as the holidays hit, there's sort of some quietness about that. But now since we're after the first of the year, yeah. I anticipate to hear more. But um, we had a lot of fun you know, making that. I can tell. <laughs> no, he, um, de definitely. Um, just lastly, then, in terms of the second half of the season and going forward, obviously we all met. Well, I don't know if we all met, but a lot of people met New Year's resolutions. What is your hopes for twenty twenty four on and off the pitch for Huddersfield Town Football Club? To win. I mean, the first thought is going to be to win. Everything moves to the, the the pitch, and that's to win. We know that that that's 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 what our fan base wants, and that's what I want as well. We know that if we win and we produce a quality product on the pitch, people will support us. And that allows us to do other, uh, produce other products and services. And we may charge for that, but we realize we've got to, we've got to make it justifiable as to why that charge exists. Mm. That's really it, so that we have a viable long-term product. Now, long-term product, whether it's, whether it's the team or whether it's the other services that we provide at John Smith Stadium. And you said you were going to analyze everything about the club, you said that on Twitter. Um, do you feel that obviously you're very early into the month but by the end of the month you're kind of hoping that you, you've done all the analysing you need well I don't know I'm not, I'm not sure exactly what you mean but I, but I remember what I, what I did say and that is that you know we're not putting any time frames on anything yeah. because sometimes those things just manifest themselves you'll just know some of it some of it you measure with, with analytics others it's, there's always an instinct and that instinct is what's feeling that you have in your stomach based upon sort of your years experience and knowledge and sometimes it's not even that it's just what you think is going to be best so we, we I feel very strongly I think a month from now we'll have a pretty good vision of what direction we're headed good um, thank you very much for joining us again it's been an absolute pleasure thank you and um, thanks for the club uh, for allowing us to do this and uh, I hope to speak to you very very soon